Hello and welcome to Game Kiwi. I'm Mike, and today I'm going to give a little bit of a primer on how to play Mahjong. I'm doing this because in our Yakuza 2 Let's Play, we're going to be checking out the Mahjong minigame soon, and I thought it'd be good if people had some sort of a frame of reference for how the game actually works. Uh, that said, this video isn't going to be tied to the Yakuza Let's Play at all, so if you're not watching that, no worries. First off, I'm going to go over the very basics of the game using some still pictures and stuff to just give a general outline of how Mahjong works. And then after that, I'll move into game capture footage from, I believe it's Simple Mahjong for the PS4. And I'll explain my process and how things are working there. Um, if you want to skip around, I'm going to timestamp everything down in the description below. So go check that out. That said... Let's start with the basics. So first, let's look at the Mahjong set itself. This is my personal set. It has black tiles. Uh, most of the time you'll see white tiles, but uh, I, this is what I got. So, anyways, a Mahjong set has four suits. First, at the top are the dots, or pin. The second, we have the bamboo, or sol. And third, the last normal set, we have the characters, which are called man. And those count one through nine across in Chinese characters. Um, for the five, it looks a little different here because this is a Chinese set. Uh, in Japanese, those two strokes on the left won't be there sometimes. And then we have the special tiles, the honor tiles. Uh, that's the last row in this picture. Uh, the first four are the directions, east, south, west, and north, respectively. The last three are the dragon tiles, green, red, and white dragons, respectively. And these orders are important for reasons I'll get into later. And the last two tiles on the bottom row are flower tiles, which are not a thing in Japanese Mahjong. So I'm... Just, can, just pretend those don't exist. Lastly, a full Mahjong set contains four copies of each tile. So, with that out of the way, let's get into the actual game. Now, Mahjong is played by building a hand. So there are two main ways to build your hand. The first is by drawing a tile every turn and putting it into your hand. And the second is by stealing tiles that your opponents throw away. And there are three ways to, to steal tiles from your opponent in Mahjong. The first is the pawn, which is when you have two of one tile and your opponent throws out a third like tile, giving you a three of a kind. You'll say pawn and you'll take it. The next way to steal a tile is called chi. It's when you have two consecutive tiles and your opponent has the third one. You say chi and you steal it. However, a chi can only be done by stealing from the player to your left. You cannot steal a chi from the person across from you or to your right. The last main way to steal a tile is called the kan. It's when you have three of the same tile in your hand already. They can't be a pun that you called earlier. It's when you have three of them in your hand and your opponent throws away the last one that you need to complete a full set of four. So you'll say kan and you'll bring it into your played zone. The last way to steal a tile is called the run. That's when you have all the tiles you need for a complete hand except for one, and your opponent throws away that tile. You call run, and you win the game. Straight up. Now, while we're on the subject of tile theft, there's one thing that you guys need to keep in mind. It is crucial in Japanese Mahjong that when you steal tiles, you denote who you stole the tile from. And here's how you do that. So you take the tile you stole, and you turn it on its side and put it facing the person you stole it from. So let's see what that looks like. So if you steal from a person sitting to your right, you do this. Likewise, if you stole a tile from the person sitting to your left, you do this. And lastly, if you stole from the person sitting directly across from you, you turn it on its side and put it in between the other two tiles. Lastly, if you naturally draw a kan, you declare it, and you put the two tiles on the outside, face down, 
and the middle two tiles as if you just stole from the person across from you. With all this stuff about how you position your stolen tiles out of the way, let's take a look at the anatomy of what makes a mahjong hand. A complete mahjong hand is made up of 14 tiles. It'll include four sets of three, like we looked at earlier, so either four three of a kind, four sequences of three, or some mix of the two. And it'll also include a pair of two matching tiles, which are called eyes. So what you see here is a complete hand. So with all of this out of the way, I think that you now know enough to look at a real game. And then I'll explain what's going on. So let's hop on over on the PS4 and check that stuff out. Okay, here we are in Simple Series Volume 1, The Mahjong. Okay, so this game is entirely in Japanese, but you don't need to worry about that. There's a lot of stuff going on here, so let's take it step by step. Right in the center, those big tiles. One, they're not that big in real life, but yeah. So that is the Dora wall, which I'll get to later. The tiles around that is the draw wall, which every turn you discard one of your tiles, and you you draw first you draw one from the wall, and then you discard one of your tiles. The wall around the middle is the draw wall. So every turn, you draw a tile from the wall, and then you discard one of yours. In front of each player, there is the discard pool, which you can see the player to my left has discarded a south honor tile. And uh, up in the corner, there is the character for east. That is the table wind which I will get to in a second. Uh, also, I'm not sure how to tell, actually. Also, each... Also, each player has a wind assigned to them each round. And so basically what the table wind and the personal wind do is if you get a set of three or four of that wind in your hand is worth a point. So a separate point for each table and personal wind. So like for example, I have this north I have this north tile in my hand. If the player sitting directly across from me had three of those in their hand, it would be worth a point if they got a winning hand. Uh there's this complicated kanji in red around all of us. That's the yakitori marker, which is basically when the game's over, if you still have that mark by your name, you have to pay extra points. And the way you get rid of that mark is just by winning a hand. Super easy. Basically, it means if you were terrible garbage the entire game, you pay for it. Well, let's... Let's get into this. So, uh, you see my hand here, and I have a little bit of everything. I have some characters. I have some. I have a dot. I have some bamboos, and I have some honor tiles. So, like I said before, the goal of the game is to get either a matching, four matching sets of three, or four, uh, four small straights, or some mix of the two. So it's pretty much as simple as just getting rid of stuff until you uh, have the set that you want. So like I'm, I'm not in the north seat and the table wind is not north, so I don't need this north tile so I can toss it. Uh, I got a three bamboo here. I have another three here, so I can try and get a pair. I don't need these dots, actually. And see right here. So he threw out an 8 character. And I have a 7 and a 9 character. So I can call cheat, and I can steal that from him. I'll do it now for... Hmm. I'll do it now. 
and I will throw out the red dragon. There are only four red dragons in the deck, so you can tell since the character, the player to my left threw out a dragon already, there are only three out there, so there's a very low chance that I'm going to get the two I would need to make something of it. Um, so the reason the discard pool is important is that you can't win off of a tile that you've discarded. So like, since I threw out the north tile, if for some reason north was to make me win, like if I had a north tile in my hand still and somebody threw out a north, or I drew a north, I could not win off of that tile. Um, they just threw out the three of sticks. So I'll, I'll cheat that too. I'll do it. Why not? So one good rule of thumb is if you don't know what to throw out, if there's more than like two different, like if you have like a one and a four, get rid of one of those. The closer the better, because that means it's easier to get new stuff. Like I got a nine here. Um, you can also use the pools to kind of figure out what your opponents are going for. So like, it's kind of hard to tell right now. Like the guy across from me, it doesn't look like he's going for dots, because he's thrown out a lot of dots. That kind of stuff. Um, what else? Alright, to the door wall in the middle. I will, uh... Okay, so you see there's a four. Okay, they just won the game. So they did... They did a run. Which, I explained, is you call the tile that wins the game. And I wish that would have paused right there. Um... Okay. Okay, perfect. I have a Dora. So, the door wall in the middle has one tile up. That indicates the Dora. The Dora is the tile sequentially one higher than that one. So there's a three dots up there. I have the four dots, so that's the Dora. What the Dora is, is if you win a hand, it's extra points. It's one extra point unit per Dora. So if I had four fours, then that'd be four Dora. But a Dora does not count for determining if your hand is winning, which I think I mentioned earlier that maybe I didn't, that you need at least one point in your hand for it to be a winning hand, which is as easy as just having a closed hand, not calling anything from anybody else, or having an honor tile that's worth points. So any of the dragons, a set of any of the dragons, or your table wind, or your seat wind. So it's not that hard to just kind of chicken hand, but it's worth it to try for better stuff. In which case, I have a Dora, so I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try my damnedest to make this four work into something. Um, let's see. Let's get rid of the six. This is a hard decision here. I have a 2 and a 3, a 6 and a 7, this 4 that I gotta make work, 7, 8, and 9. I'll get, I'll get rid of this extra 9. Um, I don't need Chun right now. Man, just get... This is a problem that I have sometimes. It just throws throws honors tiles at me left and right, which doesn't help me too much. I don't like that pun. So there's... So ones and nines are called terminals, and it gets a little bit tricky getting a winning hand with terminals. So I try not to do it unless I'm sure about myself, which I am not currently. Again. Uh, yeah, let's do this. This is not going to be a good hand for me. 
I can tell. Because, and if you have, there's uh, points for... <sighs> Shit, man. There's points for having a hand with no terminals, or a hand of uh, a terminal in every set, or all terminals, but there's... It's harder to win if you have mixed mixed stuff, so I try not to if I can. It's tricky. It's a hard game. It takes a little bit to, to get the hang of, and I, I realize it's probably especially difficult with me giving a super abridged version of how this stuff works. Shit, man. I'd like to win one hand here for you guys, just so I can show you what I'm doing. Pawn, I don't need that. Okay, so I have a 2, 3, 4 of characters, a 6, 7 where I'm waiting for a 5 or an 8, a 4, which I might not be able to work work with that. I might have to ditch that 4. Yeah, I'm gonna ditch that 4. I'm sorry. It's... It's just untenable here. Ugh. Damn it, game! Yeah, I'm not gonna... Not gonna do well here. Which is unfortunate. Okay, so here's another thing. So you'll see, probably all of us have, it says no ten, which means there's no ten and there's ten pi. Ten pi means you're one tile away from winning. No ten means you aren't. If a hand ends with nobody winning and somebody was ten pi, the people who are no ten have to give them some points. Okay, so I'm Northwind, so I can throw the south out safely. I have two Dota. Okay, so here's another thing. Uh, it's an optional rule. It's uh, pretty common in real Mahjong. That there will be a number of extra fives in the deck that are red. The red five is a Dora no matter what. Even if there's no four up there. So in this case, this red five is a double Dora. Which means I absolutely need to make that work. I can get rid of this north because there's two out there already. Um, I, it might be bad strategy, but I like keeping, uh, honors tiles, useful honor tiles in my hand until I know they're not good anymore. So this Hatsu and Chun are going to stay here for a little bit. Uh, but this four, on the other hand, is not. God damn it. Sometimes it's like this game's actively campaigning against you. Which is frustrating. No. There we go. Look at that. Sometimes it pays off. Sometimes. Sometimes. That's kind of neutral. Whatever. Three. Stop throwing out. That guy's had so many threes. It's east. There's been an east thrown out, so whatever. South. Yes, please. Okay, so he threw a chun out. And as you see, I he's to the right of me, so that chun is pointing to the right. But now, I have a point. Guaranteed, so I can just chicken hand this shit. When, oh, when you steal a tile, it's thrown away, because the numbers won't match up otherwise. Sorry the... Rules are kind of random and out of order here, but... Okay, so I have a pair. One, two, three. I guess let's get rid of these. I can get more points so I'm going for all sticks here. Okay. 
So what this game does is it shows you what you'd be waiting on. So if I throw this tile out, I'm either waiting for a four sticks, which there are three of, or seven sticks, which there are two of. So I'm in Tempai right now. So I'm just waiting for them to throw the right thing out. Unfortunately, that's not the right thing. Come on, guys. Come on. But I'm going to be Tenpai, so you'll see me get some points here. So two of us are going to get some points. Okay, I'm west. Um, I have one. Oh, this is a pretty good hand, actually. Let's get rid of some of these dots. I'm going hard in on the numbers here. Um, I can keep that west for a little bit. Oh, those two dots, those two dots I can keep. Um, let's get rid of this nine. Pawn? Sure. Let's see if I can go for a toy toy, which is all pawns. It's possible. It's difficult, possible. Let's drop this five. Drop the south. Six, seven, eight. That's good for now, unless I can get something better. Okay, okay. Maybe I can get a con. That'd be great. I'd love that. And there we go. There's a con. So that's a point. And when you call a con. It flips over another tile in the Dora wall. There's more chance for extra points. And I'm gonna unfortunately have to throw that away. Because five won't do me any good. Got another con. So I'm waiting. Oh shit, I miscounted this. I'm waiting on a six. Sticks, basically. Yeah, I'm waiting on a six. A six or a nine of sticks. Damn it. Come on, guys. Throw out what I need. It's not that, unfortunately. There we go. Who was it? Uh, so... The third one I got is San Shoku Dojun, which means uh, that you got three th three scoring things from the same suit, I believe. So I want a hand there. So I my yakitori marker is gone, basically. I'm still west because there's some stuff I don't need. There's some stuff you don't need to know that's going on. There's something. There's Specific things need to happen during winning for the round to progress numerically. Uh, six, seven, eight, eight, two, three. Whew. This is a toughie. Um, hmm. I guess we'll get rid of these. Love to make that door work, but I don't think I can. Um, no. I think I have explained all of the rules that are pertinent. Okay, there we go. There we go. So I might just end this video after this hand. Um, let's see, I've gone over 
different ways to steal. I've gone over the what makes a winning hand, how drawing and discarding works, what's up with the discard pile, what's up with Dora. different suits. It might be good to go, guys. Um, it's still... Well, there's a point right there. Uh, I mean, it's still it's still a pretty complicated game. At least up front. All of the... All the really hard stuff is up front. So once you get the basics down, you're pretty much good to go. This is a hard wait, man. There's only three tiles out of all this, and I got it! I got, so I got Toy Toy right there, which is three, um, three of a kind, or in my case, a four of a kind, which counts. Um, so with that, I think we're gonna, gonna wrap this up. Thanks for watching this. I hope this, uh, helped you out a little bit. If you have more questions, please post them down in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer them. If there are enough of them, maybe I'll do a second video. Um, you can also watch the, there'll be a Yakuza episode coming up probably within the next five, hopefully that will explain questions that AP has about Yakuza. Or about, uh, questions AP has about Mahjong. So, yeah. If you have questions, comments, leave them down in the comments below. Uh, like and subscribe to the channel if you like this and want more of it, or any of the other stuff we did. All this is pretty good. We just watched an anime called Angel's Egg recently. That's really, really great if you like art stuff, because it's very artsy. We also did a live commentary for a movie called In the Aftermath. That is a pretty good time. I think Common Track turned out pretty good. So yeah, thanks everyone for watching. Um, I hope you learned something. Most of all, I hope you enjoyed this. Um, so yeah. Thanks a third time. I'm Mike with Game Kiwi, and as always, keep it juicy.